This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a smackdown between two big Samsung tablets, both Notes. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 edition. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2, and we're going to look at them now. They walk alike, they talk alike, they almost are alike, and they're both made by Samsung. They both have Note in the name, so no surprise there. Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 edition came out late fall last year, actually in 2013, despite the name. And here we have the new Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2. Obvious difference, size. Right here, 10.1 inches, 12.2 inches. And 2 inches, you might say, how much of a difference does it make? Well, look at the market for the 8-inch tablet versus the 10-inch tablet. There's a definite perceivable difference, just like there is between a 13 and a 15 inch laptop. So size does matter, folks. There is no, this is a better product when it comes to size, it's what suits you more. The Samsung Galaxy Note Pro is much more like a laptop-y experience. You get the bigger screen and that's just how it's going to feel. They're both running at the same resolution, 2560 by 1600, both very high resolution panels, both using the same clear LCD as Samsung likes to call it that it's RGBW pixel arrangement, red, green, blue, and white. Both very bright, very clear, very colorful. Both have the same adaptive color settings. You can choose different color profiles for these. So you're getting the same number of pixels. Obviously, the density won't be as high on the bigger one here, but you're still talking very, very high pixel density. Nobody's going to say, oh my God, what a cheese ball display. It's way higher than laptops running at 1080p, for example. But in terms of portability, I know this isn't going to be in every store. You might not be able to get your hands on it. And that's the, that's the thing that's a shame because it feels a lot different in your hands. When you hold this, you can see how I'm holding it like I would normally. I, it's a handful. It's not that it's heavy. It's very thin. It's not bulky at all. It just feels bigger. No kidding. It is bigger. And we're all used to 10-inch tablets at this point. So the interesting thing is you go back to this guy after you've been using the big 12.2 and you take the 10 inch tablet which used to seem pretty big to me I kind of thought 8 inches was a sweet spot for me and this seems kind of like a, a cuddly little fella now it's funny so you might discover that despite this big one being less maneuverable you like the added screen real estate and this starts to seem more like a mobile thing like a I won't say a toy but more like you know a small tablet to you in other cases, folks might say, wow, this is just right for me. It's very portable. It's easy to handle. Look at this one hand. No problem. Sticks it into my bag very easily. Whereas the big fella is a big fella. This is just not ever going to be as portable as easy to stick in a bag, depending on your bag. They both will fit on airplane trays just fine. Things like that. They're going to work. But this one's going to be up to you. Now, I will say that I'm kind of getting attached to the 12.2 inch experience, but I mostly use this in the office and at home. I don't carry it everywhere with me, and I like that bigger screen experience. And there's going to be some software differences. Samsung takes advantage of the bigger screen. I'll show you that too. But first, let's just see footprint of the two, one on top of the other. There's a difference in size that you're looking at. By the way, both of these are available in your choice of black or white. Obviously, we have one of each here. Now, in terms of thickness, they're both extremely thin tablets third of an inch or less we're talking here. So both very skinny tablets. They both have f Samsung's faux back on them, the faux leather back that is. So here it is in white, obviously. And I'll show you what it looks like in black. Again, the color choice is up to you. Both of these are available in both colors. The, the faux leather back on the Note Pro is a little bit more grippy, maybe a little bit more organic feeling as a result, more convincingly not plastic. That, that's the only difference that I can tell you. Black will show fingerprint oils a little bit more. White will show dirt a little bit more. But anyway, not a difference between them. One thing I will say is the sides here, is Samsung uses plastics everywhere. That's how they keep it light. This looks more like brushed aluminum. It's a little bit more convincing. It gives us a little bit of a classier look. Whereas with the Note 10.1 edition, it's a little bit shinier to the point where you say, well, that's a little too shiny to be real metal. That looks kind of like plastic to me. Not a real important point. What is important is USB port location to some people. 
on our Node 10.1-2014 edition, it's at the bottom, our micro USB 2.0 port. That's where it is on almost every tablet. That's great if you use a dock. Samsung does make a kind of universal Galaxy dock that works with anything from a, a, a phone all the way up to a tablet. And with that, you can use it to sync to your PC or to charge the product. That's, that's all that dock will do for you. On our big note, we have USB 3.0 port, and it's on the side. Why did they move that? Well, here's what I'm thinking. This, their marketing is a laptop replacement, this big guy right here. Not as something you'd want a mobile desktop dock for, for charging or for syncing to your PC. You're probably going to be creating content outright on this more often. So to that end, they move this to the side where it's easier to access for USB host capabilities. Both of these have USB host, and that means you can use USB peripherals as long as there's a driver available in Android, keyboards, mice, flash drives, hard drives. Game controllers, yeah, USB Ethernet adapter. In fact, Samsung is making their own that has both a full-size USB port and Ethernet built onto the dongle. So with this, they figure you might be using more peripherals with it because you're going to use it perhaps more like a laptop. So better to put it on the side. If it's on the bottom, it becomes awkward. If you use it with the stand, for example, if the stand is too close to the ground, or if it's like our stump stand right over here, this functionally blocks the port, so therefore better to have it on the side. So it really, again, depends on what you think you're going to be using it with and for, and that sort of thing. Obviously, if you're going to use this and you want to use USB peripherals, you can also get a stand that raises it up a little bit more so that you actually have access to that bottom port. And there are right angle style micro USB host adapters, so it takes up a little bit less room. When it comes to specs, these are identical. You're getting the same internals. Samsung's Exynos Octa 5 CPU here, the 5420 that is clocked the same on both these, 1.9 gigahertz for the faster cores, 1.3 gigahertz for the companion quad cores, a little bit slower there for low powered tasks, that's really for power saving more than anything else. Same performance on these, same Mali T628 graphics, 3 gigs of RAM on both of these. The only place you're going to see a difference is in the amount of internal storage. Our Galaxy Note 10.1 is available with either 16 or 32 gigs of storage. The Note Pro 12.2 is available with 32 or 64. So keep that in mind when you're doing your size, uh, your price calculations rather. So our, our Note here, lately it's been on sale probably because the Tab Pro 10.1 came out and they're, they're equalizing the prices a bit. Don't know if that's going to always be the case, but right now the 32 gig model of the Note 10.1 is $550. It used to be $599. Right now it's on sale for $550. Again, I don't know if that price is going to stick. So if you want to compare storage to storage, minimum you can get on this is 32 gigs. 32 gig is going to cost you $750. So $200 price difference if the sale ends on our 10.1 inch, then it's only going to be $150 difference. So uh, sticker shock certainly is a factor that when you think about spending $750 on a tablet, for a lot of people, that's, that's just insane. You get a nice computer for that price, right? $500, $550, not as scary. Both of these have 2 megapixel front cameras, 8 megapixel rear cameras, same Samsung camera software on both of these. Both have the same kind of button design here, physical clicky home buttons right there. Two capacitive buttons back on this side. and. For here, this is the menu button symbol. Notice that and with Android 4.4 KitKat, Google wants people to move or manufacturers to move to the multitasking one. So this guy has the multitasking button right here. So that means applications, you'll either use the in-screen menu button if it exists, or if not, this can do double duty as the menu button in some applications as well. Both of these have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac. These are both Wi-Fi only tablets. We should see LTE versions coming for both of these. They both have Bluetooth. 4.0, they both have a GPS. Again, you're getting the same stuff inside. They both have an S Pen. And as you can see, we have Air Command here, just like we do on the 10.1. And you're looking at the same S Pen. And the fact that they're available in both black and white to match the tablet. Same Wacom Digitizer, same S Pen, 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity. Both come with bundled Samsung software. Again, that Air Command, notice it's got the same little thing on the screen here, so you can do a pen window, which means you drag, draw a rectangle and you can choose a pop-up application to run in there. You can copy stuff off the screen. You can do a search. You can create a new action memo. The same software there. Same pens. Bigger tablet needs a bigger battery. has room for a bigger battery. So 8220 milliamp battery in our 10.1, 9500 milliamp battery in the 12.2. 
Interestingly enough, given that they have the same internals at Nets, not a huge difference in battery capacity. You have to drive this bigger panel here. A bit longer battery life on our 12.2 inch model so far. We're doing close to 10 hours of actual use time on that. And with the Note 10.1, generally I get about 8. And that's running them with Wi Fi on them both and the same brightness at both, 50% brightness. They both have auto brightness. I'm not really fond of how Samsung does that. I find it's a little too dark, so I don't use it personally. Notice how similar the home screens are here at first, at first. Here, Android 4.3 Jelly Bean. Here, Android 4.4 KitKat. Don't, don't worry too much about that because an upgrade is coming, free update over the air to 4.4 KitKat for our 10.1 inch friend. What probably won't happen is the 10.1 Note is probably not going to get the new Pro UI with the magazine UI or UX as Samsung calls it. We don't know as for sure as Samsung's not saying much, but despite the fact that the Note 10.1 2014 edition has the same specs, same features, same look as all the new Pro devices that came out, it doesn't have Pro in the name, so I don't think it's going to be getting all the same software. And some things is just a function of the difference in size. So, home screen looking the same, except for notice that this widget has more stuff on it. Instead of just telling us the time and the weather, I got calendar stuff here, I have stock information. It's all a little bit more full featured. You can run Android widgets over here, you've got your little Google search box at the bottom, same in both. But this guy, this is how Samsung sets it up. They have some widgets. Notice how that looks sort of magazine like. Uh huh, interesting. So, uh, that was kind of a taste of things to come versus the true magazine UX as Samsung calls it here. Glorify Flipboard a lot of it. It's a lot of sources pulled from Flipboard, sports, arts and culture, news as you can see here. There, there are a few widgets that you can add right now. There aren't as many as we saw at CES. We hope that Samsung adds more like here's for Samsung Watch On which is the TV AV remote control application. Here's one for the calendar for a hand come off it's, that's included in here for the Samsung Apps application where you can get more apps, the video player. Beyond that, it's mostly Flipboard news source services. So it looks cool, but how useful is it to you? If Samsung adds more custom tiles there, then it could be more useful. Otherwise, it may be more pretty than anything else. It, it's certainly tablet-centric and a very nice presentation, good for ooze and ooze. So for this guy here, again, Something that sort of approximates it. In fact, this is a Samsung watch on widget that looks an awful lot like what we saw on this experience here. In terms of speed, there's, you know, when the Note 10.1 2014 came out, people gave it a hard time for lag. And unfortunately, mobile computing products are a work in progress. Manufacturers release them first and send out the firmware and software updates to fix them later. This is fine. This does not lag. This does not drag. I really don't feel much of a difference in terms of the UI responsiveness. A little, little bit faster here, but not a huge bit. Probably due to some streamlining for the magazine UX. Now here is a pronounced difference. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition comes with Polaris Office, which is a fine mobile office product. This typical mobile office product has some features, but not all the features. Here we have Handcom Office on the Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2. It's about the closest thing you're ever going to find to Microsoft Office on the desktop. Much more powerful, much fancier. Support for all kinds of formulas in, in Excel, all sorts of formatting here, ribbon style contacts. We've got formatting, we've got insert up here, shapes, text, free line drawing, all sorts of things, table of contents. It's it's much more powerful. For those of you who actually use Office and use it with advanced features to your preference, you're going to like hand come Office better. If you're just looking at a couple of spreadsheets, doing minor computations, doing simple documents in Word, then Polaris Office will be fine, but it doesn't really have all the same stuff. And your, your menu commands there, it, it's pretty simple stuff. Not in the same league. The keyboards also, they're similar, but Samsung worked real hard with the, the Note 12.2 keyboard. It's got the 3D look on the keys, but it also, they've got more room to work with. It really feels like typing. If you use two hands and you actually touch type on it, you can do it. It's glass. It's going to feel weird. It's haptic, okay, but it's bigger. You get the arrow keys over here, so a little bit more of a full-featured keyboard compared to our smaller friend. Both of these have the floating keyboard option if you want that. You don't need something so big. Press and hold on that button and we can switch to the floating keyboard and those are quite similar on these. 
and there's a split view keyboard as well. Now for the UI, for the multitasking here, multitasking has always been a hallmark of the Note 10.1. Gets even fancier, even better on the 12.2. They have more screen to work with, so adding more features makes sense. For those of you who have used a note before, you know how it goes. There's that little tab here. You can drag it out. It'll self-hide after a while. You have a selection of applications. Not every single application will work, but you get a quite a nice selection there. So say I want to bring gallery in. I can do that, or I can put it on this side over here, and I can resize it as much as I want. Okay, that's fine. So here, there's no more little tab that you pull out from the side. You can swipe in or you can use it, press and hold the back button. That's nothing new. That's, the back button part isn't new. So on the 12 inch one, I can drag in just like that and say I want to create a spreadsheet. Just throw it in there. That way you can see what the UI for that looks like. And then I swipe in again and I want to have Adobe Reader up. So I can refer to that. I could put that on either side just the same. I could also put it up and down so you can do a split horizontally. And there's our Adobe Reader. But wait, there's more. Say I want to take notes with Quill, which is a third party application. So you can split up to four screens here. So there you go. You got more room, so now you can go four screens. Uh, both of these have paired window saving, so if you want to say you know that you always like to have your email up and your note-taking application, you can do that. You can have them saved as paired windows. You can switch side to side on both of these. You can set it so when you're in the email viewer, if you tap on a link, it's going to open up and split screen side by side on both of these guys. So those options still exist on both of these, but this level of multitasking only comes with the bigger note. So how about viewing websites? Here's where bigger is better. Let's face it, text is just larger and easier to see on a bigger screen. Android handles the scaling just fine on both of these, so they're certainly both readable. But I do find, especially on very text-heavy websites, that the bigger one is just easier to read without having to adjust my font size on it. You're going to have the same speed, same features. Both of these have both the WebKit and the Chrome web browser. So really the same experience. Obviously, if you're going to be watching video on these, bigger is more pleasing. you got more to hold in terms of weight, 1.65 pounds versus one and a quarter, and more size, which may be more relevant to more people, something that's bigger to hold, but wow, 12.2 inches is kind of like watching on your sub notebook, isn't it, or your ultra book versus 10 inches, still kind of, you know, in the class of the iPad, it's kind of little video, but well, it's better than a seven inch tablet. When it comes to the, the software that's bundled with these, again, very similar. This right here is S Note. You get S Note on both of these. You get Samsung's S Voice on both of these. You get the full suite of Google applications on both of these. You get Sketchbook for Galaxy, which is Autodesk Sketchbook Pro, which is a nice bundle on both of these. That's what's open over here. This we have S Note. We have the floating notes. We have the Air Command features on both of these. We have the Smart Stay. It looks at your face, so it won't turn off the screen if you happen to be staring at the screen. So you're looking at the same thing there. When it comes to drawing, it is nicer to have a bigger palette. I think a lot of artists are going to prefer this size. Even if you're taking notes, I don't write particularly teeny here, there's not a lot of room for a lot of words on screen. Now, if you are good at writing small, that's something else. By the way, both of these can convert to text. Both of these have Evernote integration, so your S notes can get saved automatically to Evernote. And Evernote is enhanced on both of these, so that if you press and hold on a spot in one of your notes, you'll get a little pop-up with a pen, and you got to be really quick and tap it right there. And then you can actually write and have it turned into text automatically. So I, I would say the bigger screen really wins here for actually using the pen for for either artwork or for note-taking. When it comes to scrapbooking, grabbing things using the pen and putting them in the scrapbook, it's about the same. Now how about speakers? Bigger is usually better because you get stereo separation. On both of these, the speakers are located on each side, kind of closer to the top, so your hand's not going to block them when you're holding them in landscape mode. So let's hear the difference. That's not bad sound quality. It's not harsh. It's not tinny. Now let's try the same thing here.
Now, as tablets go, that's not bad, but it's a little more tinny sounding and it's not as loud. So, as you might guess, the bigger tablet wins on this one. How about using them as a book in portrait mode? Well, in both cases, that's kind of a little awkward. It's more awkward with the bigger device. Now, if you're using this as a notepad, then this is perfectly comfortable, legal-sized notepad kind of experience right here. But when you're reading, you know, it's big, it's a little odd, but it works in again. Look at all you get to see on screen. Notice that this display is a little bit wider too. This one is a little bit pinky bluer. Both of these have the reading mode option. It is not turned on on either of these. So that's what it looks like in terms of page turn speed, in terms of speed all across the board for 3D games, books, anything that you've got, you're looking at the same thing. When it comes to magazines, if you're going to use Zinio or Google Play magazines on these, both do a nice job. Again, more screen real estate here makes things a little bit easier to see. How about for magazines? Same magazine, open on both of these using Zinio. Covers, you know, easy to read everything on the cover, certainly. Going to have more sharpness here because, again, higher pixel density. Same resolution squeezed into a smaller area. Because it's so sharp, even tiny text is easy to read. Still, overall, if you don't want to switch to reading flow mode, the bigger screen is always going to be a little bit easier to read. How about if we put them in landscape mode and go by facing pages like that? That's where things get really hard to read on a smaller tablet, generally, because they're rendered even smaller. Thanks to its high pixel density, it's remarkably sharp, the Note 10.1 2014 edition. Uh, is it comfortable to read something that small? I, if you get really great eyes, it is, but you can. You actually can without trying too, too hard. Here, obviously, everything is going to be a bit bigger, so a little bit easier on the eyes. There, we got the same page on both of these. Uh, I don't look at that and say, ooh, I need to resize that quite as much, but also, it's not quite as pin sharp. And one last UI point while we have these in landscape mode is, again, a slightly more tablet-centric UI here on the Note Pro. For example, little things like just pulling down the notification shade. It doesn't take up the whole screen here. They said, oh, that was kind of weird that we took up the whole screen, made it like a phone. So there's your old notification style. Takes up the entire screen. Not the biggest thing in the world, but just worth mentioning. So in the end, who are these guys for? Well, I think in part, this is the same target audience. It's the note takers, it's the graphic artists, it's those of you who are very productivity minded because the S Pen does a lot more than just take notes and draw. It makes copying things, annotating things, clipboarding and scrapboarding really a whole lot easier. It depends on the size that you're willing to manage and carry, the difference in weight, obviously, and also, of course, the price. I mean, this guy is pretty darn expensive, but beyond that, if you'd like to watch movies a lot, I think you're going to probably like the bigger screen better. 12.2 inches worth of your movie is going to be more fulfilling than 10.1 inches. If you're an artist, you probably prefer the bigger panel as well to draw on. just gives you more room. You don't feel so cramped as you might on a 10-inch display. For those of you who really want to use Office to its fullest extent and you don't want to get a, a Windows tablet or laptop to do the Hancom Office here is more capable on the Note. Pro series. Uh, some creative people are already borrowing the Hancom Office installation files and putting them on the 10.1 inch note. I'm not telling you how to do it here. That's technically not, not lawful, but you can do that if you're really creative. But anyway, you get the nice Office suite built in here. For those of you who really need all the advanced features, do you need footnotes, endnotes, do you need pivot tables, all those kinds of things, and then you're going to be more interested in the big one. This has some more business-minded software on here. They both run Knox, for better or worse, for, for bootloader security on here. You get WebEx pre-installed on this. You get a Bloomberg Business Week one-year subscription on both of these. Now, you can actually download WebEx for free, download that on any Android tablet, so that's still available for your Note 10.1, just not pre-installed. This comes with remote PC, remote access program. Again, those are available on Android, so you're not completely out of luck on the 10.1. If you want to do that kind of thing, it's just not pre-installed free of charge. So there you have it, Note versus Note. And really, in the end, what's going to come down to is your budget. How much money do you have to spend on a tablet? How much money do you want to spend on a tablet? And your preferred size. I, I don't think the weight is really a huge, huge issue here. It's more the size and how well it handles. And of course, you've got some streamlined, kind of more tablet-oriented software going on on the bigger Note, too. But functionally, you get just about the same experience on the smaller Note.
Again, its size, its price, it's up to you. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review of both of these products. Watch our video reviews and subscribe to our YouTube channel.